The Boston Celtics completely did 360 this season after starting the season slow and that is in large part due to how their team defense has been able to grow. It's very hard to turn a season around after a bumpy start, but coach Ime Udoka has really coached this team in a way that plays to each of his players' strength. With a rookie head coach pulling off this turnaround, talks of coach of the year should be looked his way. And currently, the Boston Celtics hold a defensive rating of 106.5, which ranks second in the league. And according to Cleaning the Glass, the Celtics are the best team in the league defending the three as teams shoot 34.2% against them. The Celtics are also the best team defending the mid-range as teams shoot 39.3% against them. And the Celtics rank 16th in the league at defending the rim as teams shoot 65.3% at the rim against them. The Celtics have the personnel, they have the rim protection, and the switching principles that make them an elite defensive squad. Their starting lineup of Smart, Brown, Tatum, Robert Williams, and Al Horford gives them length and great defensive players that can guard multiple positions. Looking at this starting lineup, there's not one guy you can look at and say, hey, let's attack him. Smart can give guards hell and hold his own on big men, and Tatum and Brown are greedy defenders that can switch multiple positions. Al Horford can operate as a post defender, rim protector, and switch on the perimeter, and in my previous video I discussed Time Lord and his ability to be a help defender usually guarding a wing in the corner, and this allows him to roam the weak side freely away from the main action to swap shots. And if you get by any of these Celtics defenders on the perimeter, you have to then meet Williams, who has become one of the best shot blockers in the league. And then off the bench, you got guys such as Derek White, Peyton Pritchard, who gives effort on the defensive end, Daniel Tice, and then Grant Williams, who's a versatile defender that can guard multiple positions. This team heavily plays into switching and help defense. Switching allows the Celtics defense to blow up most offensive actions. One of the Oklahoma City Thunder's main play is a stagger screen into a double ball screen. And this action is easily contained with seamless switching on the stagger screen and then on a double ball screen, multiple switches which leaves Shea being defended by Jason Tatum. Now even though the Celtics are fine with Tatum defending Shea one on one, Tatum has the physical tools and defensive chops to slow down any player. But also, Tatum has backline help to where they can put the offense in even more trouble if they can't break down Tatum. They look to send help on the drive here from the weak side in Derek White, and Al Horford would stunt at the ball. Shea basically drives into nothingness, and Horford is able to get his hands on the ball and strip it loose. It becomes even harder for Shea to make a play out of this as Jalen Brown gets in between the corner player and the wing player. One thing I appreciate about the Celtics defense is even if they get an unfavorable matchup off a switch, they do a great job in scram switching, which requires good communication and timing from teammates to execute this. Being a great switching team is vital in building a great defense and previous champions has been able to communicate switches well and have the personnel to effectively do this. Many teams try to switch, but it's either they don't have the personnel or the teams don't have plans to counter if an unfavorable defender is matched on a great offensive player. As illustrated here, if there isn't good communication on these scram switches, then you get plays like this where Cade Cunningham looks to come from the corner to switch on Capella. It isn't communicated for Grant to immediately sprint towards the corner and now you just have a mess of a defense leaving a shooter wide open in the corner for three. And on the Spain pick and roll here from the Mavericks, Donovan Mitchell looks to stop the ball and ultimately switches. This doesn't need to be done because Rudy Gobert can cover ground and guard the Luka drive and stay with Powell. And even with Mitchell switching here, there is no communication for someone to pick up on Reggie Bullock. This leaves Bogey having to help from the corner and Royce O'Neal rushing to close out, leaving Dorian Finney-Smith wide open in the corner. The Celtics have smart defenders and a coach that can look to counter any potential mismatch. Let's have a look at the Boston Celtics defense in their game against the Denver Nuggets a few nights ago which saw the Celtics win 124-104. to As mentioned, Robert Williams usually guards a wing player and Williams is able to play into his strength as a roamer. So on this Jokic post up against Horford, Horford does a good job, but once he gets a bit near the paint and his head is facing at the ball and not really seeing the court, 
Time Lord comes over to help double and pressure Jokic. Now this gets a bit risky as Jeff Green is able to flash to the top of the key. There isn't a defender established to help rotate over. Now Jeff Green is shooting 30% from three so you can live with him shooting if he gets the ball. Jokic has two bigs defending him. Williams is able to use that 7-6 wingspan to deflect this pass by Jokic. And if Time Lord is involved in the action with this Jokic Gordon ball screen, Rob can play either drop or here at the level of the screen and disrupt potential passes with his length. Now what the Celtics do on say pistol action or Chicago action with a guard at the wing and another guard coming from the corner, they just immediately switch this. Here the ball gets to Cousins on the elbow and the Celtics switch here off ball and even on the weak side corner switching the pin down. Grant Williams does a great job denying the ball and on this ball screen Daniel Tice switches, cuts off the drive and forces a turnover. The Celtics have excellent one on one defenders but you need excellent team defense to go far. This is great rotations on defense by the Celtics. On the inbounds, the Nuggets look to go into a pick and pop. The screen gets Pritchard to trail a bit, which forces Daniel Tice to help pick up. Now, once Bryn Forbes picks up his dribble, he is looking at the pop as he draws the defense away from Cousins. Now, time to rotate. Tatum sprints to close out on Cousins, which now forces Forbes to find another option in Rivers on the wing. White rotates to Rivers, Grant rotates to the corner, Tice will pick up Jermichael Green, and this is an excellent block on a closeout from Grant. Now on this possession, I don't think the switching is all too necessary on this ball screen here as it's set high and Derek White can just go under and meet Highland. Maybe Williams can hedge a bit to deter Highland from potentially cutting that corner and driving inside, but nonetheless, the Nuggets have a favorable matchup with White on Jokic. So now Jokic looks again into the post. Now, as I mentioned before, Celtics look to scram switch in scenarios like this, with Williams' defender looking to clear from the corner and Highland calling out to Forbes to slide near the wing. It's communicated for Williams and White to switch. This is executed and the Nuggets lose that mismatch. Williams now defends Jokic one on one to perfection, deflecting the ball and pressuring Jokic and defends this turnaround hook shot with a strong contest, forcing a miss. Now I love this defensive possession because it really forces Jokic in a tough position. Jokic is one on one with Grant Williams in the post and as the offense clears out, it's difficult for Jokic to attack. Peyton Pritchard plays Jokic on his left side so if Jokic drives left, Pritchard can help dig at the ball. Tatum can rotate over to Pritchard's man and you have a strong defender in Grant Williams bodying him up. If Jokic looks to drive right, now Time Lord can freely roam and help on the drive and he communicates to Brown that his man Aaron Gordon is on the wing. Now it's already tough to just go one on one with Williams so now it's just let me see if I can shoot over him. Grant gets a strong contest, forcing a miss. Grant Williams is a vital defender for the Celtics off the bench because at 6'6", 236 pounds, he's undersized in height, but with great strength, he operates as a P.J. Tucker type player for the team who can defend multiple positions comfortably and give effort. And once he gets beat here by Jokic, he is able to time this block well. You get multiple positives on defense here by the Celtics. The Nuggets love to run this horns play with a back screen for a guard as he cuts inside and Jokic dishes it inside. The Celtics defend this well again a switch on the back screen from Gordon. Then as Gordon looks to take Pritchard inside, you get another switch getting Williams back on Gordon. This is all blown up and now with time running down, the Nuggets have to reset. Will Barton looks to reject the ball screen taking Jalen Brown inside. Brown defends him well, but it does look like Barton is going to get a shot off. But now you have to meet Time Lord, who blocks this shot as he helps from the corner. The Nuggets here get a Jokic post up on Grant Williams. It's hard for Jokic to back down and just bully Williams as he shows that strength. Keeps his arms up high. Jokic takes off at a tough angle and Rob Williams helps off of Gordon near the dunker spot and strips him loose. This Celtics defense has grown to a level of that of a championship tier defense. With their offense led behind Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, their push to a potential NBA Finals looks very, very possible. That'll wrap it up for this video. Are the Boston Celtics serious threats for a championship this season? If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this. And with all that being said, I will see you all in the next video.